Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Amina and you probably noticed a brand new background. As you can see, I have moved into a new place and still kind of deciding on my filming space and still getting furniture arrived and, and, and all sorts of things. And that's why I've taken a little break from posting, but I am back. I am going to be posting every Wednesday and Sunday as usual. And in today's video, we are talking about the iPad and how I use it productively and ways that I've kind of discovered how to use it more productively in my life. Since returning back to work after maternity leave, I have started commuting into work and so I decided that actually I want something in between a phone and a laptop. The laptop is quite bulky, I don't always need like a massive laptop around with me if I want to do a bit of work on the go and then I find my phone really distracting and so I wanted something in between where I could kind of just open up a device, do a bit of work and just close it and get some Something done and I was kind of on the fence about it I did debate quite a bit whether or not I did need it and so I was on the fence and I think this video will be really useful for those of you who are thinking about getting an iPad but not sure how it will fit into your life since purchasing it I have found so many new ways of using it in my life so I think it'll be helpful to share those with you if you want to see more videos like this then don't forget to press the subscribe button to see more from me and let's get started. The first thing I do with the iPad is using it to work with PDFs. Now PDF documents are documents that I receive literally all the time, so it could be research papers I want to read, papers that my students send me, my mentees from the page doctor, it could even be like financial documents, legal documents that I have to sign for various things. I've gotten really annoyed at sort of printing and having to leave it at home and highlight and kind of just find it really kind of cumbersome to have loads of PDFs and loads of like printed documents all over the place. And so I find it really helpful to be able to just use an iPad to annotate documents or to open documents, to read documents, to, to scan documents as well using the iPad. I just find it really, really useful and a lot more sort of user-friendly than your phone and you definitely can't scan a PDF on your laptop so I find it really useful for that purpose. And as I mentioned, you can scan a document using the Files app on the iPad and it's completely free so you don't have to like purchase a new one but there are loads of like scanning functions in other apps such as OneNote and Evernote so you really have so many options when it comes to using your iPad for documentation. The second thing that I use it for the most is note taking. I found myself on so many occasions just grabbing my iPad to take notes using the Apple Pencil and I just find it really useful as opposed to trying to find like paper and a planner or a diary or like having to relocate where that particular document is. I use Notability and I find Notability to be really really useful for using it for PDFs, for note taking, for scripting, loads and loads of functions and I just find it really easy to just pick up my iPad, take a quick note using the pen as if it was you know a normal pencil with my handwriting labeling that note whatever meeting it is then I can come back to it later because I have the same app on my phone and my laptop and my iPad I'm able to open up that note wherever I am which makes it really useful and something that I can't necessarily do if I have written my those those notes out on paper some really useful note-taking apps that you might have heard of are good notes one note I use Evernote as well and notability of course and then you've got your Apple notes and there's loads of different note taking apps that you can use and they're all really useful just find the one that suits you and the one that kind of fits into your life the best and instances where I found this useful is when you're in a lecture, if you're a student starting university or you're already in university and you know you're going to be in lectures, I find it really useful to have sort of the iPad just to kind of take notes during meetings or lectures. I also find that I've seen doctors who are on like ward rounds taking an iPad to kind of scribble the notes as opposed to writing it down on paper or on their phone. The phone looks a little bit more unprofessional, it looks like you're kind of on your phone texting someone. So it's nice to have like an iPad which makes you look a little bit more like you actually doing work so yeah there's so many there's so many so many instances where I feel like it'll fit into your life quite well to take notes on the go the third thing that I use my iPad quite a bit in my life is for scripting and for recording videos so if you're someone who does like social media or like me has a YouTube channel you'll find it really useful I actually have my iPad right here 
as you can see my puzzle right here um, and what I do with it is I've taken my notes and I write down a script for every single video so kind of like rough kind of pointers for what I want to talk about otherwise I'll just go on tangents and I'll miss the point completely so I've taken some kind of notes before I record a video and then I sit down with my iPad next to me and I just kind of keep on looking at it every couple of minutes to make sure that I've covered all the points that I want to cover and that's for me really useful I mean obviously I could use my laptop but I just find the laptop a lot more kind of clunky a lot heavier and there's so much going on on my laptop that I feel like I just get distracted looking at other things and the same with the phone again I could use my phone but it's just such a small screen and it doesn't make me feel like I'm working and I also have the keyboard as well so it kind of does transform into a laptop which is something that the phone doesn't do so I definitely find it useful for, for that kind of thing another thing that I do is when I'm in a meeting or I'm giving like a presentation or I'm doing some sort of like public speaking or something I just have the iPad sort of on the side so I've got my notes there and I'm able to refer to them quite nicely and quite quickly and kind of quite discreetly as well so you can't tell that I'm looking at my iPad because it's at the same level as my camera whereas if I had my laptop or my camera it, it's a bit more obvious where I'm looking at the screen so yeah really 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 useful if you're into sort of video production or, or that kind of thing the fourth thing is for planning journaling or even like as a portable diary surprising and if you've been watching my channel for a while now you would probably be surprised at this but I actually don't have a diary this year or a planner I am shocked myself because I'm pretty sure since like the last 10 years or so I've had a diary I've had something that I've used to write down like notes meetings etc I mean I think part of that reason is because I was on maternity leave so I didn't really have like formal meetings I couldn't really follow a timetable as such but I found it really useful to have a calendar or to have some sort of like portable PDF or downloadable PDF that you can use in order to annotate as and when you please. I have designed my own planner so I'll leave a link for it down below if you want to go and download it as well and it's undated so whenever those like those days for example like today where I'm like today's a filming day it's a work day today's a getting stuff done day I can just like time block and plan accordingly and I'll talk a bit more about planning and time blocking in a video coming up in a few videos from now but it's really helpful to think about sort of how long each task will take you there's loads of apps that you can use for this to time block as well but I just find it really useful you've got the iPad anyway and you can just use it to journal and because you have the Apple pencil it does really just feel like it's just pen and paper and I am a traditional gal and I like that it feels like pen and paper so yeah definitely useful for journaling and to use as a diary or planner the fifth thing that I use this for and this is a recent discovery I say recent Probably like two months now or something before I just just before I moved here I discovered that you could use your iPad as a second screen and I, I think I saw someone I follow on Instagram one of those like study pages and he was using it as a second screen and I was like why did I not think about that because this whole time I've been thinking about getting like a desktop or something that I can use to kind of extend my screen with but then at the same time like I was debating do I need a fixed desktop I'm not really a sit down and work in the specific spot type of person anymore just because you know I have a child now so I can't just like sit down at a desk for two hours I'm sort of like okay I'm here now I'm here now and I'm gonna be here now it was so handy that I figured out it's just literally just I think you just have to cast across and, and extend your screen and so what I can do is it allows me to kind of not have to go back and forth between different apps or between different websites or different pages I can kind of be on my laptop and have let's say the page doctor stuff up and then on my iPad I can plan the next video or I can have one kind of document up on here and then I can have my meeting on here so it's really it works really well and this iPad as you can see is quite a large screen if you can compare it to my phone like it's quite a large screen so it really does allow you to have a good view and a good kind of amount of space as if it was almost actual you know an actual laptop so it works really well for me as a second screen and I highly recommend using it as one if you have got an iPad already and you don't know that it does this it does this it's amazing one thing that I recommend using it for as well if you're a student if you have like lectures you might have your lecturer and your video uh, online especially because now everything's online right so you might have your lecturer going on zoom on, on your laptop and then you want to take notes at the same time so rather than sort of having to like have it really like narrow on the side in another window you can kind of have your iPad as the second like window and take notes on 
hear and you're kind of watching the lecture at the same time. Another thing that I do is when I'm in meetings and I want to take notes, again, I still want to see the person that I'm speaking to and I don't want like a tiny screen so I can have the person speaking to me here and I can kind of take notes just on the side. The sick thing that I use my iPad for, a bit, a bit less personally, but I know I can see how others would do it a lot more, is for studying and learning. So I've mentioned quite a few studenty things that you can do, but just in general, I think it's an amazing tool for learning if you allow it to be just for learning in the sense that on my iPad, I don't have anything signed in. So I don't have YouTube signed in. I don't have any of like my passwords for any websites. I think I only have page to email. So I don't have anything on there that would allow me to kind of be distracted. And so what that does is it really is my tool where I want to just get things done, where I just want to be productive <laughs> and minimize the distractions. So I'm able to actually just use the iPad in a very productive way without being distracted by all the other things that you get on your phone and even on your laptop. I've got loads of tabs open on my laptop and that really bothers me. And that's my fault, <laughs> but that's, I'm sure we're on the similar situation. Whereas on the iPad, I feel like it's just very clean and very minimal. So when I come onto here, I really just have a few things that I can access, which are the things that I need to use the most. And as a student, I think that's kind of the biggest pitfall kind of just being wanting to get stuff done and then just being distracted by all the kind of confounding factors around you so on here i don't have like my iMessage sound signed in or whatsapp I, I just get no notifications so it's amazing i can just get stuff done so yeah i think it's really really useful for studying and learning you can make flashcards too you can use anki or you can just use like just your standard notes and have different pages that's a really cool way and, and it means that you can kind of use those flashcards on the go if you're traveling or if you're like in the garden, you don't have to have like a pack of flashcards. You can just flick through your flashcards on your iPad. And the other really cool thing that my sister does actually on her iPad is she records the lectures and she listens to them later and then she also takes notes at the same time so it means that you know that you're not missing any information out because obviously your, your lectures are recorded um, and then you're taking notes at the same time so you're actively learning so you're not just kind of statically listening you you really want to find a way to actively learn so if that means record the lecture now and then sort of take notes at the same time so you're actively sort of picking out information and then later on recapping that that's a really good way of staying aware awake and alert and also engage with the content. And then the last way that I use it quite a lot, as I mentioned, I don't have anything signed in, so I don't like go onto YouTube with it, but I do use it for other audio resources. So things like podcasts, things like eBooks and audio books. Those are all things that I kind of just pop on the side when I'm tidying up or when I've got like my son running around and I don't, you know, want to watch something or I, you know, I, yeah, we don't have a TV, so we don't really watch anything during the day or, or any other time. But if I do want to have like something on in the background rather than sort of having my head phones in and not being able to hear him and not interacting with him i just put something on a podcast or just like lbc the radio i don't know something to listen to and it means that i'm still like engaged with him he can hear conversation as well which is really good for his development as well and it just means that i'm able to kind of do a couple of things at the same time the alternative would be to have it on my phone but like i said with productivity the key thing is trying to minimize any distractions that you have around you and i just find that this thing Maybe it's the way that I use it, but it's way too distracting <laughs> for me. Every time I go onto it, I just find 10,000 other things that I need to or want to do or decide that I need to do in that moment. And I never get to the thing that I actually have touched the phone for, like picked up for. So the iPad, there's nothing else I can do on it apart from doing what needs to be done. So I think if you do end up getting an iPad, try to minimize what applications you actually log into or what application you download. Make sure that it is a purely productive source of <laughs> of work or study. Otherwise you will just end up with another tool that's really kind of detrimental to your productivity. But yeah, I hope this was helpful. I hope that you guys were kind of could see ways that I use my iPad. I, I really like this, it's so cute. And I just can't wait to, things are opening up a bit more now. I know that it's still not great, but things are opening up a bit more and I just can't wait to be able to like go out to a cafe or go out to like the park. Yesterday we went to the beach and I took my iPad on the train with me and it's just so nice to kind of have something portable that's not heavy very light kind of you know under your arm <laughs> and just allows you to sort of get something done in that five ten minutes that you have even you know be able to feel like you've been a bit more productive than just kind of scrolling aimlessly on your phone let me know if you were on the fence and if you were deciding whether to get an ipad or not for your new academic year or you know just in general go for it i think
think it will really enhance your life. I mean, I do think you have like a month to return it anyway, so you can always try it out, see how it goes, and then return it if you don't feel like it's adding value to your life. But yeah, I think I would use it a lot more if I was like a bit younger, student, or <laughs> didn't have a baby that I had to like tend to all the time. But let me know what your thoughts are. And if you have an iPad, what other ways do you use it? Because I would love to discover new ways of using my iPad that allow me to work more productively. Anyway, don't forget to leave me a comment and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to see more from me. I really want to hit, I don't know if I can do it this year, but I really want to hit 200k. Yeah, I'm on like 125 something. Oh, we can, I think we can do it. I think we can do it. We slowed down a little bit, but I think we can do it. I want to hit 200k by the end of 2021, which I'm very hopeful for. So if you want to see more from me, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and I'll see you guys in my next one. Okay, bye.